All right, I'm taking a second shot at getting this video uploaded on my channel and acknowledge in comments some of the most common points that were made in that first upload. Quarantining, this is definitely the most commented on, asked about thing, and actually the reason I did want to do this. The easy answer is yes, there is a quarantine option. There are a lot of reasons I didn't choose the quarantine option. So number one, I really, really care about the environment, and I'm not saying that anybody that chooses not to quarantine doesn't care, but to me, the quarantine methods that the FWS recommends are quite substantial. It's a it's a time commitment and that's a time commitment I was not ready to make. When I purchased them, they were the easiest, most low maintenance plant you can keep. The past four years, I've cleaned out their container and changed the water once every month and that's pretty much all I've had to do for them. So they're super low maintenance, but the quarantine maintenance is a lot more, again, substantial than that. So I just wasn't ready to make that time commitment. Kind of brings us into the other most common like topic that was brought up in the comment section or question and that was why don't you just pour the water down the drain and actually anybody that watched that video and listened or you know read the website for themselves because I did link the FWS website down in the description box they do heavily talk about the fact that zebra mussels so the hidden danger that can be in marimo moss balls can't be seen with the human eye for months. Even though the water may look clear to your eyes and safe to pour down the drain, it's not. And yes, sure, a few people had pointed out I could be boiling that water every single time I was cleaning out their container, but that comes back to the time commitment thing where I got the Marimo moss balls in the first place to be something super low maintenance. I'm not saying that decontaminating the moss balls wasn't, was easy. It definitely wasn't and it wasn't a decision I made lightly. But I do still stand by that decision and I think I made the best one, especially for my own situation. There are ways to be able to pour the water directly down the drain, but the risk at the end of the day outweighs it all for me which is why I chose not to go that route. I did refer to the official government website regarding the zebra mussels put out by the Fish and Wildlife Service. And I do wanna read you a section of this article regarding the quarantine option and what the Fish and Wildlife Service has to say about that. All right, so we're up at the top. If you scroll down, scroll down. I can't see where I'm scrolling. Keep scrolling. Straight from the website, it says in bold, can I just quarantine my moss ball for a few months rather than destroy it? And here's what they have to say. Zebra mussel larvae are very small and often can't be seen by the naked eye. They can live in water, aquarium substrate, and decorative elements in your tank and can damage filter systems. Until we know the extent of the moss ball contamination problem in the United States, we strongly recommend that moss balls purchased after February 1st, 2021 be destroyed. The water decontaminated and your tank cleaned according to the instructions on our website. So here's the point a lot of people are bringing up. It is understood, however, that many aquarists and water, water gardeners make significant investments in establishing and maintaining their systems and that discarding the water and reestablishing a system in which mussels have not been observed may not be ideal. As an alternative and consistent with steps necessary to prevent the release of zebra mussels, aquarists and water gardeners may follow a quarantine method. And then they say, please refer to the link above for detailed instructions. So they do have like a separate link you can go to for those quarantine options. But again, in that section, referring directly to quarantine specifically, they do still strongly recommend that moss balls purchased after February 1st, 2021 be destroyed, the water decontaminated and your tank cleaned according to instructions on the website. So yes, they do give that option for those of you that maybe have invested a lot of time, effort, money, whatever into your aquarium. I mean, whatever you decide to do, that's your decision. But also what I decided to do was my decision. So of course, at the end of the day, moral of the story is I didn't have to decontaminate my moss balls. Not a single person on this planet has to do anything. They can recommend, recommend, recommend. But at the end of the day, the ultimate decision is ours. And to me, the environment is worth how hard it was to say goodbye to the moss balls. As always, with every single video I post, any information I state, do your own research and find what works best for you and your situation. 
I do really want everybody to take this super seriously because it is a super serious issue. Nobody ever has to do anything. We don't have to conserve water and energy. We don't have to cut back on our plastic usage. We don't have to eat a plant-based diet, but it's down to the individual to make the decision that they feel is best for themselves and the environment. And it comes back to the quote, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So to me, that kind of sums it up and my reasoning why I chose to decontaminate as opposed to quarantine. That decision is for each person to make. I am again, just one voice on the internet. I hope that cleared some things up and answered any questions you may have. Here's the video. <sighs> hey guys. Today's video is one I feel very sad about, sick to my stomach even. Let's just get into it. I have this hobby where I like to scroll through the interwebs, Facebook, as my grandpa would call it, reading up on like new planty related articles, you know, that are coming out in the news, try to keep up on what's going on. I stumbled upon an article put out by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service about Marimo moss balls and why we should destroy them. Yep, you heard that right, destroy them. Those of you that have been around since the beginning know I've talked about Marimo moss balls for such a long time. In fact, Marimo moss balls are the very first plant that like really caught my eye and got me into plants. I don't know what it was about them. They're just so cute and cool. They're so unique, you know? Something about them really roped me in and truthfully started this whole thing. Since these have been such a huge part of my channel and my own personal plant journey, I just felt it was really important for me to talk about this here and like let you guys know what's going on in the Marimo moss ball world. Down to the nitty gritty, basically moss balls coming into the US, I know it's also Canada as well, have actually been found to be infested with zebra mussels. This video is going to be telling you a little bit about these super invasive zebra mussels, which are a huge threat to our ecosystems. And little did we know they actually can be hiding in our own aquariums, jars with water with moss balls in our own home. So it's quite wild. Here are the timestamps of this video. Feel free to skip around, especially if you already know quite a bit about zebra mussels. I will be telling you a little bit more about them. So if you'd like to skip to how to effectively destroy and sanitize to help protect your ecosystem, um, then go ahead and skip forward. What exactly are zebra mussels? In North America, they are known as the number one most invasive and destructive species contaminating our waterways. Native to freshwater sources in Southern Russia and Ukraine, but like in North America, they have quickly become invasive species in many areas across the globe. The reason these are so dangerous is they negatively impact freshwater ecosystems in multiple different ways. So first off, they attach to and kill native mussels. Since they outcompete, outfeed most other uh, filter feeders, they end up starving the filter feeders, which are super important in fit filtering out specific types of algae in balance amounts. They spread super quickly and can encrust and therefore destroy seriously anything. This includes like water pipelines to say power plants. When they contaminate the waterways to power plants that are, you know, cleaning our drinking water sources, once they encrust these pipelines, it's extremely difficult and expensive to filter out specifically zebra mussel poo and it can leave a gross taste and smell in water. Ew. Ew, super ew. They totally can destroy boat engine, engines, docks. Also really scary is in their larval stage, they are impossible to see with the human eye and they do stay small like this for quite some time. We can have them in our Marimo jars for quite some time without even knowing about it, which is so scary. So this kind of brings us into why moss balls specifically are the issue right now. As of the day I'm filming this, zebra mussels have actually found to have contaminated marima moss balls being sold in pet stores, specialty garden centers, pretty much everywhere in 20, what is it? 21 US states. So the US Fish and Wildlife Service is strongly advising anybody who has purchased moss balls after February February 1st, 2021 to destroy them, to help stop the spread of these things. Because guess what? Even pouring your Marimo 
moss ball water down the drain without killing whatever's in the water can contaminate waterways, which that is so scary, right? Okay, I'm panicking. <laughs> so me, I have some moss balls that I purchased years ago. Just before uh, finding these articles, I did combine. So in this jar, I did combine my oldest Marima moss balls that I've had for four years now with some of these new ones I bought literally a week ago. So that really, really sucks. I'm going to have to say goodbye to all of them because honestly, it's not worth the risk to me, but I am very sad about it. Am I gonna cry? It's not that big of a deal, but I feel really bad. So on top of that, I do also just wanna say that a lot of places that were selling marima moss balls have been coming out with statements saying that they do test for zebra mussels before selling them in their store. But upon investigation by the wildlife service, those tests aren't happening because places that have said they've tested for it and have come out negative and have sold these have been tested by the wildlife service and they've found zebra mussels, zebra mussel eggs, larva, living zebra mussels. So, you can't trust this statement. The government is urging anywhere that has made the statement to take it down. So this all brings us to what we need to do, especially for moss balls purchased after February 1st, 2021, how to safely destroy and dispose of moss balls. I am just going to be reading off a list of the ways that the Fish and Wildlife Service um, has stated needs to happen. And then I'll show you me actually doing this with my moss balls. I'm going to take it really seriously. I urge all of you to take it really seriously. Um, whether you just keep them in a jar by themselves or in an aquarium, there are steps you can take to disinfect and protect your local ecosystem, your local aquatic ecosystem. Number one, you can freeze your Marimo moss balls, take them out of the water, put them in like a Ziploc bag and freeze them for 24 hours. Do not take them out of the bag and toss them in the garbage after that 24 hours. You can do the method I'm going to be doing, which is to boil them in, you know, boiling water for one minute. You can also use the bleach or vinegar method, which I don't prefer this method. I don't wanna like mix stuff and have to soak it for a long time, but with bleach, you can soak in unscented bleach diluted to one third cup per gallon of water for 10 minutes, or you can soak them in undiluted white vinegar for 20 minutes. All right, so then onto the dispose step. Once you've actually killed whatever's living in your moss ball, and unfortunately also the moss ball, that's a part of it. They will not survive any of those steps. Put your dead moss ball in a sealed bag in the trash. So I'm just gonna use a little sandwich bag and zip it shut. Liquid you've used in the steps to destroy them, whether it be vinegar, the bleach solution, boiling water or whatever, is safe to pour down your um, like household sink because whatever's in it has been killed. You may want to do more research if you have a fish tank. If your marima moss balls are in a fish tank, put other living organisms in another container with fresh water separate from the contaminated source. Remove the contaminated water from tank and sterilize with one third cup bleach per gallon of water. Let it sit for 10 minutes and then it's safe to pour down your house drain. Don't pour it outside or like in the storm drains, anything like that. You can't pour bleach down that, it can cause problems. Then you can clean your tank one of several ways. Fill it with water at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Soak it in that boiling water for at least two minutes. You can also create a saline solution by using one half cup salt per gallon of water. Soak all contaminated materials for 24 hours in that. And then again, pour the solution down the sink and rinse it out. Or you can use bleach. The mixture is one third cup bleach per gallon of water. Soak entirety of the container for 10 minutes and then pour down the drain. If you do this method and you keep living things inside of it, make sure you use a dechlorinating product. I'm not sure what that is. To neutralize residual chlorine before adding a uh, like aquatic life back into it. That's kind of all the information um, I'm going to tell you about zebra mussels, but you can read up on it. It's very, very serious, difficult, if, if not impossible to get rid of. So prevention is the way to go about this. You know, when you have boats, I don't know how it is other places, but here in Utah, if you have a boat and you're like on the freeway driving somewhere, every so often there are these stations you have to stop and have your boat inspected. What they're actually inspecting for is zebra mussels. Like that's one of the number one things they're looking for uh, to make sure it's not spreading from place to place because they have unfortunately spread and 
filled so many different freshwater lakes and rivers and places. Yeah, make sure you're stopping at those. It's important, okay. So now let me introduce you to my Marimo moss balls. Oh, I'm so sad. Okay, like I said, I'm going to be boiling these because I stupidly mixed my older Marimo moss balls, which obviously weren't contaminated because zebra mussels haven't shown up in four years with my new ones. I have cleaned out these things so many times and dumped water down my sink. So I really hate to think that I potentially could have introduced these zebra mussels to a local pond or lake or, you know, the water that I drink. I feel guilty. Filled my little thing up with water and I'm going to start the oven. <sighs> We have the pot going on the stove. And once that's boiling, I will come back and we'll add the moss balls into the water and then also sanitize the containers according to the Fish and Wildlife Service steps that they provided on their website. <sighs> this is gonna be really hard. I feel really sad about this. Ah, the water's boiling, but I'm like not ready to do this. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. Should I use like a spoon? I'm actually going to use skewers to pull them out of the container and put them in the water so that I'm not contaminating anything else. I don't know like how, I don't honestly know how quickly they could spread. I can't do that one first. That's like my, oh my gosh. I feel so bad, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm really gonna cry. Why am I such a freaking boob? This sucks. I'm so sorry. This last one is the one that like I bought initially, like my first Marie Momos ball. So I feel extra attached to it. I just wish I hadn't put these ones in with the new ones. Like that is my biggest regret right now. And I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I just feel really attached to this thing. And then I guess for all of this stuff, I'm gonna pour like a bunch of salt in here and mix it up so that, um, and then let it soak. How long did it say? Oh, I should start a timer. And then I'm gonna soak this for 24 hours with the salt. I'm just gonna pour a bunch in there, but like fill it up all the way with water because um, oh, that's the thing about zebra mussels. They can live for like some time out of water. I don't know exactly how much time, but I'm just gonna fill this up and add salt, a bunch of salt to it, all the way to the top because I don't know how long it's taken for the water to go down and I don't know if they're hiding. Okay, let's add some salt. Are those gonna melt this bag if I put them in it right now? I need to add them to a bag and toss them in the garbage. Yeah, they're dead. Oh, is it burning? Actually, it doesn't seem like it's melting the bag. Oh yeah, they're like really falling apart. Um, I don't know if you can see, it's like turning brown. You can see it more right there because this one's kind of broke apart, but I'm assuming that's what's happening in the middle. They're just mush. This sucks. Oh, this one's turning brown too, the ends. I'm not gonna lift it up to the camera because it's kind of big and I'll drop it, it's kind of heavy. But the ends are brown and it smells really bad. They're dead, they're gone. Okay, what's done is done. All right, zip this up. Should I put it, I'm gonna put it, it doesn't seem like it's melting the bag. I'm gonna throw this in the garbage and dump this boiling water down the sink. We'll let it cool and then dump it down the sink. But that's that. I will empty these tomorrow. And yeah, it's done. I feel really sad about it, but I feel happy that like, I know I did what I had to do, you know, just to like decrease the risk of introducing those little suckers to somewhere around me. Okay, yeah, anyway, that is it for this video and I will see you in my next one.